Hey, today I'm going to bring a message that, that I hope that, that you'll get that I, I just believe is, is so prevalent today. And I'm going, to, I'm going to use a term that I think a lot of you can relate to. And the, the title of the message is, Is Jesus Your Farrier? Is Jesus Your Farrier? And if, if He's not your farrier, uh, He needs to be. He needs to be. And all, I've always, I've, I've told you all this before, D is always wanting me, and I always forget which one it is. Not this one, but this one pedicure. Dee's always wanted me to go get a pedicure. She's always telling me, go get a pedicure, go get a pedicure. And, and I, I just hadn't been able to bring myself to it. And <laughs> don't make me call this crowd down over here, okay? I, and I know there's lots of people that do, lots of you in this room I have now found out do. I can't look at you with a straight face right now, but you do. I'm talking about men. And, and finally, <laughs> the other day she came clean with me, guys. We were, we were sitting there and I had some flip-flops on. And I noticed she was staring at my feet. And she goes you seriously need to go get a pedicure. And I said, you've told me that forever and how much I would enjoy it. And there's other things I enjoy. I'm not going to get a pedicure. She goes, no, you don't understand. Boy, you got to do something with those feet. <laughs> and so for the first time, I realized that it's an observation thing. You know, it's just an observation thing. And so uh, <laughs> anyway... Y'all are wondering, no, I have not gone to do that. <laughs> but uh, it's an observation thing. And, and one of the things in, in the last few years that I've really understood, even though I've known what a farrier is for, for years, never really fully understood it. But a farrier is, is, has several different things that he does. And we're going to talk about possibly over the next couple of weeks several of those things. But one of the things that, that a farrier would do, and I got to see this, I actually observed this, uh, this week, but I called, I called a friend of mine and said, hey, look, are you going to have any farrier work done out at your place this week? And he goes, yeah. He goes, what's up? I said, I want to come watch. And uh, one evening, and, and I said, I, I have a message this week, and I just, I think it would help me. And one of the interesting things, there was this particular horse that he wanted to, for him to, to take care of, and, and the farrier, for the first few minutes, did this as he walked him in a, walked him in a round pen. And, and I said, what is he doing? He says, he's observing He's observing. There's a lot that a farrier can tell about a horse if he just observes him a little bit. And so I, I wanted to talk about today for the very first thing is, is Jesus your farrier? And I want us to go in the theme and the basis of observation. Say the word observation. observation. Amen. And so if you guys, if you, if you want to, after service, uh, if you want to take your shoes and socks off and come line up across the front. And, and, and let somebody tell you yes or, or no, you don't need to worry about a, uh, which one is it? Pedicure. <laughs> then uh, we, we can do that. But what I'm really hoping for, watch. What I'm really hoping for is by the end of just a few minutes, that each of us are ready to stand before the Lord with our spiritual naked feet and let him observe what kind of work he needs to do in our lives. Would you say amen? amen? Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your love, grace, and your mercy. Father, may we submit to you now for just a few moments as we read your word and share your word together. And the church said amen. Amen. There's a verse of scripture in Romans chapter 10, if you want to turn there. Romans chapter 10 verse 14 and 15. And I want to I want to share this with you. And again, as you're turning there, Romans 10 uh, is Jesus your farrier? And you're going to hear me say, and we're going to talk about God, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit, but is, is he your farrier? And are you allowing him to observe some things in your life? That verse of Scripture says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How can they call on someone if they do not believe? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher, say amen. 
Now, you're thinking about preacher like I am a preacher, and that's not what we're talking about in this text. I want you to know that if you're a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, that preacher in this term is meaning just someone who shares the good news of Jesus Christ. And the very first thing I want to share with you today is that as Jesus is, as Jesus is your farrier, he's observing you to see are you sharing what you've already experienced in Jesus Christ. Would you say amen? Amen. I know that if, if uh, Joey and, and Joni won $63 million in the lotto, I would suspect he'd share a little love with his best bud. Can I get amen? Amen. amen. Some of you are going to go, did, did they win? A, it, it, yeah. And, and so, but because I have observed some things. And, and, and so, I, I want you to understand that there's an obligation there's an obligation, and, and Christ is our failure. He's observing our walk. He's observing our walk and seeing if we're sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. What is the good news of Jesus Christ? I believe a lot of people get confused about what we're supposed to be sharing and what we're supposed to be giving. And, and there's all kind of things you can read on Facebook. There's all kind of things you can read on, on the Internet. There's all kind of things you can see on the television. And there's all different kinds of churches you can attend, all different kind of denominations you can attend. And, and what, I, what I'm going to tell you is this. Jesus Christ in his ministry never really, or I should say, very seldom ever even addressed some of the issues that are being talked about today. Do you understand that Jesus Christ very seldom ever referred to the end of times? I'm not going to say he didn't. I said it was very seldom. He very seldom really ever talked about I, I, could, I could go on and on, tribulation periods, uh, the, the end of times, the, the Antichrist. He never really went into all of these things. Most of Jesus' ministry, when I say this, 99% of Jesus' ministry was so that you would understand the need of sharing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Say Amen. <laughs> Because you and I can share everything in the world that we want to share. But at the end of the day is what you're sharing, what you're walking, what they see with your feet, spiritual feet. Is it leading them closer to Calvary that we just sang about? Amen. And so I, I get that verse of scripture and it says, how, how? Can they call on someone that they've not believed in? And how can they believe in someone they've never heard about? And how can they, how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent, as it's written? And it says this, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. So, na 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 But I'm a firm believer those of us that are sharing the good news of Jesus Christ need a spiritual pedicure. There's some work that needs to be done. I want you to understand observation real quick. Let me give this to you. Number one, in Romans 8 and 26, I want you to understand that not only does Jesus observe our walk, but he also observes our weakness. A farrier can watch that walk. That farrier can look at the foot of that horse and actually not even know that it has an issue, but it can look at that hoof and know that if there's not something done, there's the potential for issues in that horse's life. There's potential for disease. There's potential for it becoming lame. You and I need to come before the Lord. This is the invitation today. And we need to say, Heavenly Father, I invite you, if you would, to be the farrier in my life. Heavenly Father, I invite you to be the observer in my life. Lord, I want you to observe me. I want you to observe my feet. I want you to observe my very being and correct me where I need corrected. Would you say amen? Now, if you've heard that, and you're able to sit back with ease and go, whew, I got this one licked. There's no room for change in my life. I got this. You of all people need to pray that prayer. 
There is not a person here, including myself, that if I said, Father, I invite you this week to be the observer. Can you imagine a personal invitation if this could happen? If Jesus physically was able to come down and, and you were able to go, I want to put a reservation in because on Monday, tomorrow, I want you to spend the entire day with me and observe me. How many of us would be a little nervous and on edge? <laughs> then do you understand that that same spirit is observing you tomorrow, whether you invited it or not? It's just that real. So not only does he observe our walk, but he observes us in our weakness. Look at what Romans 8, 26 says at the screen. Likewise, the spirit, say spirit, also helps us in what? In our weakness. How many of you here have weaknesses? Raise your hand. Okay, about half. And so, and, and so I want you to understand that if you invite Jesus Christ to be your farrier, if you would, your observer, if you would, in the very things that you're weak in, Jesus says what? He will help us in our weakness. What else does that scripture say? For we do not know what we should even pray as we ought to pray. But the Spirit himself, say Spirit himself, makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Say amen. I want you to understand, gentlemen, that I've been married to this lady and, uh, for 39 years now. And, and listen to me. I think after 39 years, I'm just learning how to talk to her. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Some of you men are like, I'm not looking at my wife. I'm not. <laughs> I, I, we Sometimes that communication... It, it, I, I can't tell you how many times in 39 years I know what I've meant to say, but when I said it, that was not the reaction I meant to get. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes in our lives, the world can come against us so strong. The enemy can come against us so strong. So many angles from the north, the south, the east, and the west is just bombarding us with things that we don't even know how to pray anymore. I've been there before. Mr. D has been there before. And I want you to know today, if you're here today, and you just have more on you than you can bear, you're like, Pastor, I don't even know how to pray. If you'll invite Jesus, he will be your observer, and he will help you in your time of weakness. Not only in the time of weakness, but let me give you number two. He observes you and I when we need the truth. There's this old famous movie with Tom Cruise, and I'm trying to think of the name of it real quick, but he's a lawyer, and he's got this big, uh, I don't know, full bird, what is it? I knew D would know it, A Few Good Men. How many of you have seen that movie? All right, two of us. And so in, in this deal, he's talking to this, this guy, and he has him on the, on the, on the uh, whatever they have in court, yeah, on the stand. And so he's just really, I mean, this, the music's really getting loud and it's getting really intense. And he's asking him a question and he's fighting back. And he's asking him a question. And he's fighting back. And he's asking the question. And finally he says, amen. It was much better on the movie. <laughs> he said, you can't handle the truth. I want to make you aware of something before you do this. Today, when we have our invitation moment, and you invite Jesus Christ, you invite the Holy Spirit, I'm not talking about to be your Lord and Savior, I hope you've done that, but you, you invite a special invitation, Father, I want you to observe my life. You better be careful and be ready to handle the truth. You see, there's some truths about you and I that the farrier needs to clean up. I like this. He says, he will guide you into all truth. And listen, I love this. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. For he, he being the Holy Spirit, will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you those things to come. Isn't it interesting when we see the correlation between, the Holy, between God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we see the word. And Jesus says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with me and I was with the word. In the beginning was the word. That's Jesus, right? 
And he says in the next scriptures that your word, say word, is a lamp to my, what? Feet. And a light to my path. What? Listen to me. There's more emphasis on feet and where our feet are spiritually and where our feet are going in a path. You see, a lamp shines a light and we're able to observe where we are. But a light shines our path so that we can see what direction we need to go. You and I have an observer who will give us not only observe us in our weakness, but observe us and give us the truth when we need the truth. Let me give you number three. He observes us when we need hope. Say hope. He observes us when we need hope. Let me give you Psalms chapter 91, and there's going to be a lot of scriptures here, but I want, to, I, want to, I want to read this to you. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, say amen, and I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, say refuge, he is my forest, say forest. My God, in him will I trust. Amen. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous of pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. Say amen. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence of walks that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only your eyes shall you only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Listen to what the observer says. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Say amen. There's an observation that the Holy Spirit is doing in your life. And that observation is that he's helping you in your weakness if you're willing to let him. He'll help you know the truth if you will seek the truth. He observes you when you need hope, if you need hope. There was a lady that was praying one day. She was just a little aggravated in her tone with God. And she was just having her prayer of complaints, I call it. And she said, Lord, just to tell you what kind of day I've had, my alarm didn't even go off like I said it. The sandwich I ordered at lunch was wrong. It had mayo instead of mustard. That's not a big deal to some people. To me, that's huge. <laughs> Amen. Oh, man. My nail appointment was canceled. I get home and I want to use my foot massager and it wouldn't even work. Just pouting to God. We do it. We do. We pout to God. This isn't right and that isn't right. The woe is me. God said, well, in reference to the alarm, there was a drunk driver coming down your road at the exact time that you leave every day and I made you two minutes late and you don't understand it, but it saved your life. He says the sandwich you made the first time was made by an individual that was sick and has the flu, blood, flu bug, and I didn't even want you to get the flu. And about the salon, I need you to watch the news tonight. There was a robbery at the very salon that you go to, and I wanted you to be protected. And he says, and about your foot massager, there was a short in it, and have you, uh, and it would have knocked, let me see, <laughs> you had a foot massager, had a short in it, it would have knocked out your power, and I didn't figure you wanted to be without power this evening. Listen to me. 
God has our back when we don't even know it. God has our back when we don't even know it. He is our farrier. He can observe when things are about to happen. He can protect us. He can lead us into truth. He can keep diseases and unfortunate out of our lives at his will. Not only is there observation, but there's trimming, there's cleaning, there's some shoeing that's got to be done. You let him observe your life today. The invitation that we offer is this. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, will you accept him today? Simply by meaning it in your heart, confessing your sins to him and say, Lord, will you be the, the boss in my life? And I'm going to do my very best to live according to the way that your word teaches me to live. But maybe you're already here and you're a Christian. Will you say, Lord, it's been a while since I've had some farrier work. <laughs> and there's some observing that I need you to do in my life. You see, I can remember as a little boy coming in from playing outside all day long. And I hated to take a bath. I did not want to take a bath when I was a little boy. And Mama would tell me, you got to go take a bath, Harlan. You have grandma beads. Did anybody ever call them that? I had these little dirt rings around my neck. And I'd go and I'd look in the mirror and try to find grandma beads. You see, I had dirt on me that I didn't even recognize I had. Now, this sounds funny. I smelt like outside instead of smelling like her sweet little boy. Sometimes I come in from the hunting club and I reach to hug D and D goes, whew, you are like reeking of outside. Go take you a shower. I wonder if today if we approached God, if we approached Jesus, if he's like, whew, whew, I love you. Man, you got to clean that up. You you got to you got to you got to do something with your feet here. There's some observing, maybe that we're not even aware of that we need to allow the Holy Spirit to do today. Is what I'm telling you. Because I can do it, and you're going to get mad. You can even ask your husband or wife to do it. And Dee and I've played this game before. We don't recommend it. <laughs> I recommend you just get true to yourself and true to the Lord and say, Lord, will you observe me today? Will you show me what I need to clean up? Will you show me what I need to do different? And as you show me, I'll do my best to fix that in the Holy Spirit. Amen? If you're willing to do that, then you bow your head and you just pray and you spend your time with the Lord. Amen. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus to reach out and touch you and say that we love you open our ears Lord and help us to listen Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. If you've received the blessing today, give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. <laughs> There's nothing like coming clean with Jesus. Nothing like coming clean with Jesus. Nothing like it. You might be out there in the, that big, huge pasture this week. 
Just take a time to stop. Look at the beauty of God's creation. Acknowledge him and say, Lord, observe me. Observe me. Amen. God is good. And all the time, God is good. I feel led to do something this morning, but we don't, we don't hold people up to do this. This is just by special invitation. We don't like to make a show of it or anything. But I do know there's some of you here that are sick with cancer and uh, sick with other things and things going on in your life. And uh, when we dismiss and everybody starts to leave, I'm going to invite uh, Brother Joey to come. And uh, I want Brother Mark, if you would, if you would come. And if you would just like prayer, that's it, just prayer. We'll come together as a big group, and I'd just like for these men uh, just to pray for you if you want prayer. Amen? Amen. We ought to be able to do that. And so uh, be blessed this week. Be blessed this week. It's, it's exciting what's going on at Line Camp. It's exciting. I mean, look around. That arena's close. Amen? Amen. We're having a meeting after church to decide what Saturday we can go get the arena and bring it like we've already got it. That's exciting. There's women's conference that's coming up in just a few more weeks. It's September the 14th. There are people from other states, even as far away as Colorado, that are going to be coming to this event. It's going to be a tremendous event. I encourage you ladies, I encourage you ladies to save that date and come and be a part. Go back there and, and buy your ticket. If you don't have the money for the ticket, Dee's covering it. And uh, it's not an issue. But we just need to account for how many people is going to be here. It's going to be a great day, a great day for the women. It's one of the, probably, I, I figure this is the second biggest thing that we do next to TBE. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. Lots of meetings, lots of announcements. They're back there in that bulletin. I'll let y'all out three minutes early. Can we sing this song he's playing? Let's do it. We'll stop. Like the woman at the well, I was seeking, sing it church, for things that could not satisfy. Right here. And then I heard my Savior speaking, draw from this well that never shall run dry. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I walk no more.